from the Hebrew myths. Yahweh created man and woman in his own image on the sixth day, giving them charge over the world. But some say at the time Eve did not exist yet. Yahweh had placed Adam to name every beast, bird, and other living thing on the earth. And when they had passed before him in pairs, male and female, Adam, being an adult male, felt jealous of their loves. And though he tried coupling with each female creature in return, found no satisfaction in the act. So he therefore cried, Every creature but I have a proper mate. And he asked that Yahweh would remedy this injustice. Yahweh then formed Lilith, the first woman, just as he had formed Adam, except that he used filth and sediment instead of pure dust. Then, then from Adam's union with this demoness, and with another like her named Nama, who was Tubal Cain's sister, sprang demons that still plague mankind today. I only bring up the sister to say many generations later, Lilith and Nama came to Solomon's judgment seat disguised as harlots of Jerusalem. Adam and Lilith never found peace together, for when he wished to lie with her, she took offense at the recumbent position he demanded. Why must I lie beneath you, she asked, and I was also made from the dust and am therefore your equal. Because Adam tried to compel her obedience by force, Lilith in a rage uttered the magic name of Yahweh, rose into the air, and left him. Adam complained, I have been deserted by my helpmate. At once angels were sent to fetch Lilith back, and they found her beside the Red Sea. And then they found her beside the Red Sea, a region abounding with levitious demons, to whom she bore Lilum at the rate of more than oh, 100 a day. Return to Adam without delay, the angel said, or we will drown you. Lilith asked, how can I return to Adam and live like an honest housewife after my stay beside the Red Sea? It will be death to refuse, they answered. Well, how can I die? Lilith asked again, when Yahweh has ordered me to take charge of all the newborn children. Boys up to the eighth day of life, that of circumcision, and girls up to the twentieth day. Nonetheless, if ever I see your three angels, names or likenesses displayed in an amulet above a newborn child, I promise to spare it. To this they agreed, but Yahweh punished Lilith by making 100 of her demon children perish daily, and if she could not destroy a human infant because of the angelic amulet, she would spitefully turn against her own. Although it largely died out by approximately 400 CE, Mesopotamian religion had still had an influence on the modern world predominantly because many biblical stories that are today found in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam were possibly originally based upon earlier Mesopotamian myths, in particular that of the creation myth, the Garden of Eden, the flood myth, the Tower of Babel, the figures such as Nimrod and Lilith. She seems to have been based on the Assyrian demoness Lilithu. Creatures resembling Lilith are first mentioned in the Mesopotamian mythology, However, they do not take shape of the characters from whom subsequent Jewish legends just yet. The name Lilith is the Hebrew name for a figure in Jewish mythology. It developed early in the Babylonian Talmud. The story is generally thought to be in part derived from a historically far earlier class of female demons in the Mesopotamian religion. They have been found in cuneiform texts of Sumar, Akkad, Assyria, and Babylonia. The goddess of the night, Adam's first wife, who according to Jewish beliefs was created together with him. She, however, rebelled against his needs to dominate and fled from Eden. And the meaning of her name varies from night creature, night monster, demon, screech owl, lady air, wind, or spirit. The tradition that man's first sexual intercourse was with animals, not women, may be due to the widely spread practices of bestiality among herdsmen in the Middle East. Oy vey. This is still condoned by custom, although it figured three times in the Pentateuch as a capital crime. In Akkadian Gilgamesh epic, Enkidu is said to have lived with gazelles and jostled other wild beasts at the watering place, until civilized by Aurora's priestess. Having enjoyed her embrace for six days and seven nights, when he wished to rejoin the wild beast, but to his surprise, they fled from him. Enkidu then knew that he had gained understanding, and the priestess said, Thou art wise, Enkidu, like unto a god. 
primeval man was held by the Babylonians to have been androgynous. Thus, the Gilgamesh epic gives Enkidu androgynous features. The hair of his head like a woman's with locks that sprout like those from the grain goddess. The Hebrew tradition evidently derives from Greek sources because both terms used in Tanatic Midrash is to describe the bisexual Adam, our Greek androgynous man, woman, and or two-faced. Philo of Alexandria, the Hellenistic philosopher and commentator on the Bible, contemporary with Jesus, held that man was at first too sexual. So did some Gnostics. And now this belief is clearly borrowed from Plato. Yet the myth of two bodies placed back to back may well have been founded on observation of Siamese twins, which are sometimes joined in this awkward manner. Divergencies between the creation myths of Genesis allow Lilith to be presumed as Adam's first mate, result from a careless weaving together of an early Judean and late priestly tradition. The older version contains the rib incident. Lilith is usually derived from the Babylonian Assyrian word Lilithu, a female demon or wind spirit, one of a triad mentioned in Babylonian spells. But she appears earlier as Lilac on a 2000 BC Sumerian tablet from Ur, containing the tale of Gilgamesh and the willow tree. There she is a demoness dwelling in the trunk of a willow tree tended by the goddess Inanna on the banks of the Euphrates. Popular Hebrew etymology seems to have derived Lilith from Lelel, night, and she therefore often appears as a hairy night monster, as she also does in Arabian folklore. Solomon suspected the Queen of Sheba as being Lilith. In the post-biblical period, some ancient Jewish scholars took the stance that Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 must describe two separate events, since it appears that woman is created differently in these accounts. Considering every word of the Torah to be accurate and sacred, rabbis need a midrash or a story to explain the disparity of the creation narratives of the two Genesis accounts. Okay, that sounds like homiletics. God creates woman twice, once with man and then another from man's rib. So there must be two different women. The Bible names the second woman Eve. Lilith was identified as the first in order to complete the story. Now, accordingly, Genesis 1 describes the creation of Adam and an unnamed woman, later called Lilith, then in Genesis 2, which gives more details of Adam's creation and also describes the creation of Eve from Adam. So there you have it now. That's how the rabbis explained it anyway. It sounds like Midrash to me. <laughs>